This is In Boot Camp, Episode 6, APIs and AJAX, on Saturday, February 23rd, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB6. Hey. Hey, how's it going this week? It's good. How about you? Good. Another week done of Boot Camp. Another week? What week is this? this we had uh, just finished week six. Week six. Like, can you believe it's been that long already? Yeah, you know, time. Well, now that we're starting to get a little farther in, I'm starting to have a lot more fun with the boot camp. And uh, just for my records, how many times did you miss class this week due to storms or holidays? Uh, one. There was the uh, President's Day. Okay. And even yeah. though that you're on a Tuesday, they just turned well, off Monday and Tuesday. I, I think we've been over this before, but uh, in my system of classes there is a monday wednesday group that has class monday wednesday and then there's the tuesday thursday people who have class tuesday thursday and then on saturday we all share one classroom together in harmony it's kind of weird because um well there's not enough tables for everyone and so we have to mingle with different classes and so it's part of the plan Hey, yeah, I would rather they were in the corner and then we had the rest of the room to ourselves. Who's they? The Monday, Wednesday people. Oh, I see. I mean, because you're some kind of elitist, apparently. Exactly. Yeah. I believe that Tuesday, Thursday people have the right to the whole room because on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we get the whole room. And I am that privileged. I see. Um, so oh, just... We work in groups in a lot of stuff. You know how coding is. It's not a. I it's do. a social. It's it's good though. We work to in all, groups and stuff, and it's also good to get to talk to people that you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, meeting new people is great. It is. It is great. Yeah. So, so you've been doing JavaScript, right? Yep. For like three weeks now. And so, tell me what some of the assignments were, because I've uh, forgotten oh, over the past. Yes. Month. Uh, so I just got my homework back for the latest one. It was. Um, there was uh, four images of crystals, and each of them got a random value every time uh, the page loaded or you won or beat the game. Um, you had to match a number that was also randomly generated with the random values of the crystals. And so. And you weren't told the random value. You just had to well, kind of. It's between. You had to intuit it by looking one at the 12, values. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's, it's a fun. It's a, it's a guessing game. Yeah. Um, so hope to get a one. Right. Because if you get a one, you can just increment up to the number. Exactly. If it's an even number, you can if you and you get a two, you can also increment up to the number. So I showed you version one, and you were very, very angry with my working version one because you said <sighs> it was improper. It was extremely improper. Can you tell the audience what you did in oh. in version one that was so bad? Well, I'll tell you my brilliant solution, ladies and gentlemen. I had four image takes, each of them with linking to a different colored crystal. Yeah, it was supposed to be the crystal counting game. You can see this on the GitHub, because um, it is on the GitHub publicly. For uh, now. For now, until I take it down. We should talk about that later, yeah. Yeah. Um, look in the show notes. Um, but basically, I used jQuery to add the attribute value to the image tag. And you said, you should never be storing value in an image tag. And I'm like, but it works. But it's wrong. Yeah, but when you view page source and every time you refresh the page, you can just see the values changing. Yeah, so Matt showed me this the other day and I freaked out. Yes, he did. <laughs> it is not semantically correct to store values on an image. I mean, those are for form elements, buttons, maybe. That's a stretch, but maybe. But um, it is semantically correct to make each image um, the key for the object that you store the that's, value that's in. not semantically incorrect it's just a fluke not better but not worse yeah. so <laughs> in the end ryan prevailed and all my information was stored in an object so so what we did is i guided matt through uh a series of tubes and pipes to see the light and uh, i showed matt that instead of having this value property on an actual dom element you could instead have just an object Right, it was just, yeah, an, yeah, just an object, object. Just an object named each color of crystal, so like purple or green, you know, green, or, red, blue, yellow, yeah, something like that. Know. And so then each individual element would have an ID, and we we would use the ID to look up in the object what current random value it represented, um, and then you would do the math. Yeah. And so the reason this is better is because it doesn't cross concerns. The data for the game is in the JavaScript, and the markup for the HTML is in the HTML. 
the fluke though is of course that the IDs cross that barrier designed that way now so if matt had used a data attribute instead so for example data dash crystal dash value maybe Mm -hmm. uh matt would have not been wrong he would have been right and so uh it's funny while he was showing me some of the coursework material that somebody gave earlier that same week yeah they had actually used data attributes properly as in a demonstration it's just that they probably weren't emphasized it whatsoever. Um, and, you know, it's fine. It's not a big deal. But but I do try to keep the semantics proper where they can be. Now, yeah. So for another thing that's interesting is what you did isn't wrong because it worked. Oh, absolutely. It worked. It's just not semantically correct. But a funny thing in, in Vue or React or even in Angular, you wouldn't be able to really make this mistake so much. Because they treat data much differently. You, it would have been easier to do it the right way than to have done it the wrong way. Yes. But in the end, it Oop. all worked. And it did it get an A? Oh, yes, yes. I got a A, which actually is the highest grade I've gotten. I had a different TA grading it. Um, so far, I've only gotten A minuses. So for for uh, curiosity purposes, what... um. What what was that assignment like trying to like touch on? Was it like jQuery or Yes, this was the first time you were supposed to numbers? use the on click and oh no, we've used random numbers okay. and stuff before. We had that um hangman game you right. re- generated a word. Yeah, at, at random and yeah. stuff so that and then we did the rock, paper, scissors, and the computer would pick a random one and um so yeah, we it was just, you know, dom manipulation with jQuery. Right, right. So that's good. How Ended much jQuery? Up- Four, four lines? Four, four lines? No, no, document.ready, too. Oh, yes, I taunt Matt about document.ready. And you can put your script linking tag in the head if you use it. Yes. Yes. Um, but today, um, as I was saying in the intro, is starting to get a lot more fun because we're starting to actually make little fun, interactive things. Um, we're not making boring, random games and stuff. Yeah. We're, we're actually using APIs now. And APIs? So, like yep. APIs on the internet? On the internet? Uh, can you and- name some of them? Oh, I can name a ton of them. So uh, that was actually one of the things was like, okay, go find some APIs you can use that are public. Mm-hmm. Well, there's the dynamic events from the Guild Wars API, oh, which that's is so funny. Still Did broken. you do that? No, I mean, I, I mean, I, I linked to it, but um, that's cool. I, I know that that version was broken because the Guild Wars wiki said something about it being broken. broken. Uh, the company uh, just closed, so I yeah, guess that makes sense. Uh, but there's the Google calendars. There's all sorts of other stuff. So there's APIs for basically everything out there. Yep. And next week's homework will be using the open weather something API. Oh, that's fun. That's yeah. a lot of fun. So what does API stand for? Uh, application process interface or something. Programming, I think. Uh, pro- yeah. Um, it's API. Yeah, it's an API. And and so you have looked at JSON APIs for the most part. Is that correct? Yeah, um, we had to get some JSON today with some internet movie database stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so you installed uh, a JSON viewer so that you could see your JSON data. Yes. Oh, oh, you could see it without the viewer. It's just kind of smushed and impossible to read by the human. Yeah. And so with the with the little viewer plugin in Chrome, it just formats it really well. Yep. That's a pretty very, nice feature. Very, very nice. I don't know how people live without it. So did any of the um, APIs that you used require tokens or keys or anything? Um. Yes, actually, all of them. And all so, of them. Wow. Um. The cool thing is, so you know how my course particular course material was written by Trinity Schools? Yes. So it's literally ampersand API key equals trilogy. Oh. For the Internet Movie Database, oh, the open one. That well, that makes. makes it easy to see who's using it. Yep. So I'm sure they have some kind of deal worked out. I'm that. sure they do. Like, all of these are whitelisted. Hopefully. Well, I mean, think, think about it. Um, a, a few kids smashing away at their keyboard that, 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 like a request every other minute that's nothing on a server yeah i mean it's probably ten thousand requests a lesson or something at most like not a big deal yeah, yeah. i mean in the grand like think about the twitter ape, right. how, how they get bombarded well there's like 130 million twitter users so i'm pretty sure my phone just contacted the server a dozen times in the last minute exactly so it's you know it actually matters if somebody's using that one yeah so you've learned about some APIs now, and so you know the structure, and you know kind of the idea of an API. And so, do you know? Uh, did they cover like Git method or like post method or? Well, no, not really. So they, we, we talked about um, if you promise AJAX thing, like 
if you're getting something, you have to follow up with it. Um, otherwise, it will flip out. Oh, so you um, mentioned Ajax. What does that stand for? Um, oh, jeez. You know, I feel like I knew this, but I don't. It's. Give me the first letter. Asynchronous. Asynchronous. JavaScript. Uh huh. Or J. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No idea. It's just Ajax to me. I agree it's with you. It's a word. You. I mean, it's not like it sounds it's, like it's, it's a noun as far as anybody's concerned. To me, yeah, it is. no, it would be asynchronous JavaScript and, and XML. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Probably. Oh, well, yeah. Um,. I do know the XML part and how it's kind of yieldy now. Yeah, like super not relevant anymore. Yeah, but no, there's the, the git and then the then that you always have to have in there. Yep. And so what does the then do? Well, the then is where everything interesting happens. And it, you know, the callback function gives you the response that it requested. Yep. So you have to wait for the response to get done. And mm-hmm. then in the then you have access to all the data that you wanted. Exactly. Yep. So that's pretty cool. And and so like this was your just your first day playing with this, right? Yes, with the Ajax and everything yeah. else. Like everything else was just you know side stuff I was doing. Yep. So the 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 the, the idea of Ajax is so it's so interesting because from a, from a back end programmer's perspective, well, of course I can connect to another server and request data from it. Of course, like that's not special. People have been doing that since the eighties. Not a big deal. But for a browser, for a user agent on an arbitrary computer to be able to connect to an arbitrary server on the internet well, and get data, that is, that that wasn't always possible back in the early days. And it doesn't have to be another server. You can make Ajax requests for a text file on your computer. Like, it's just, um, I mean, it's super practical, but it's... Super impractical, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's 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 some... A, a really cool legacy of like what Ajax brought to the industry. Um, when you think about Ajax, what do, what do you think of as a like the obvious application? You know, fetching information. Uh, but I mean, like, what product capitalized on the Ajax capability? Starts with a G and ends in an L. Gmail. Yes. Hey, you did it right this time. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that Facebook mishap again. No, I'm not gonna do that again. Uh, so Ajax is what made Gmail possible, basically. Yeah. Otherwise, the experience would have been totally different. A lot more refreshes. A lot more, like every page. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were telling me earlier about um, a little cl- in-class exercise. Yeah. Um, so we have been doing JavaScript for almost as long as we've been doing the boot camp, pretty much. It, it feels like we got a little preview of it right away. Um, we, in the pre-work before you even showed up to class, you which was optional. Yeah. Yes, it was. And, so, um, I don't know if that makes a difference either way. Basically, we just had to write a function that summed an array. So it, it took in an array and you just had to sum up all of its values and find the average. And they were all numbers. And they were all numbers. There was no trick questions. There was... Nothing there, and a lot of people really, really, really struggled with it, and I didn't get it. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I, I don't, I didn't see the instructions. I mean, I, you showed them to me uh, a little can bit. Can I read them to you? Yeah, go for it. It's just real simple. Write a function that takes an array of numbers and outputs the average of all the numbers. Example, input, one, four, seven, output, four. Cool. Yeah. So, um... Literally easy. I mean, it is. It is the quintessential. I have a computer now, and I know just enough programming to help me with my to cheat on my math homework. As you have said many times in my life, that's one of the ways you can explain the capability of programming to yeah. people who don't know yet. But the thing is, a lot of people really struggle with it, and some of my peers are just allergic to the word function. They can, they all hard, they all, so don't get me wrong, everyone in the class could do it, but they hard coded it all. Like, so the, the three test cases, they made three bloody arrays. And, right, right. I mean, that's, it asked for a function that could take in an array and return the answer. It's just, so we talked about algorithms and stuff. We talked about making your whole things and. People can talk as much as they want, but unless they do, it doesn't stick. Yeah, but this was supposed to be a, a trivial 
exercise. Like, so they kind of have this, like, you know, get your mind in the coding thing. Like, this was before class even began. You just, you quick cash it out. Just something to do until class is ready. Make sure you, A, are in class, and B, have your, you know, your stuff open. Right. Um, Your Slack had to be open. I, I, you could have used JS Fiddle for this, but I had the... um, Terminal open or something. Console. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think, um, you know, functions are pretty critical, as you know. But we've been using them so often. But I think I think uh, if you don't actually use them, like if you did hard code all of your homework or if you yeah, did hard code I'm guessing that's... all of your in-class assignments, I mean, if you don't practice, you don't know. And in the um, we one of our exercises was we had a HTML file given to us. We had a one row of a table um, already made for us. Um, and we had to append that table to add more rows about a movie, like a title of the year it came out and the actors in the movie. Um, so it's just, you know, you little get request um, and then you just append the table. Right. With jQuery. People were going up into the H. It was a, just a JavaScript project, but people were editing the HTML like crazy. And mm-hmm. it was just really, really repeating themselves. Very, very, very dry. Yeah. And I, and I can't always tell if their instructions are bad or unclear um, or if people just don't get it. It's always hard for me to tell uh, if that's the case. But, yeah, it is. Yeah. But I'm just, I kind of feel like I'm doing something usefully thingy when I'm, you know, fetching information from other places. Oh, absolutely. Scraping that. It and... is, it is the, yeah. the use case for JavaScript now. Fetching data. I mean, it's, nobody cares that you can use JavaScript to animate a menu, slide in and out. It's so that you can do something and fetching data and then eventually posting data, returning data back to a server. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's what... Well, actually, I'm just guessing... We don't get to see our homeworks ahead of time. We right. just He told us all to sign up for this free open weather thing, so we all had a key when we walked in the door on uh, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. We, a weather app doesn't really return much but it could just i think that's a great assignment just reading in yeah it it would most likely be just reading yeah um you probably won't do posting until you have your own little back-end web app and then maybe even a database because there's nothing to do with data unless you can save it exactly which is fine you I mean it's a slow burn slow curve it's okay yeah uh speaking of uh things that you're already working on though mm-hmm. you've cleaned up your github a little bit oh yeah all the weird assignments and all the other things i kind of hid yeah, and so GitHub... Um, Just last week? Uh, maybe about a month ago month now. Ago. Uh, sometime in January. They turned on the capability to not have to pay for private repos anymore. So As long as you didn't have that many collaborators. Right, so historically, Bitbucket and GitLab would let you have free, as many as you wanted, private repos. Uh, GitHub never did, though. Um, but now they do. So you can have as many free private repos as you want, as long as those repos have three or less collaborators. Yeah. Um, and for um, my recommendation is if you're in a boot camp or even if you've gone to college but used your own, own public GitHub for college work, if it's for class, if it's from an assignment, hide it. Because um, I don't really want to see your hangman game or your whatever. I want to see work that you've made up and work that you've thought about. Yeah. Uh, because the code will be better if you thought about it. Like, you don't care if the code is 100% perfect when you submit it in class. It doesn't matter. Absolutely add it. not. I mean, if it, they don't really reward they, effort. They kind, they kind of grade it, but just enough to see that it works and it looks exactly. right ish. But when it's, an assign- when it's a project that you make for yourself, you will care about the code more on average. And that's the code I want to see. And making it harder for me to find your code with your style and with your particular um, interest, that makes it—it it just makes it harder for me to find it. So don't don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I always recommend cleaning up your GitHub. And I'm trying to work on my image right now. Yeah, that's great. Speaking of image. Yeah, I um. You bought a printer. I bought a fantastic brother printer, much bigger than I thought it was. Um, but. I'm going to be making resumes. I'm going to be making letters and everything else. And I wanted a printer that could do all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got one. It's completely wireless. And it works out of the box, which was something I was absolutely thrilled about. Um, so I could print on the phone, print on the laptop, and print on the desktop. That's all amazing. without doing anything. No drivers? 
No, you didn't have to spend hours Ubuntu and hours had, of knew it, Windows knew it, and Android knew it. And I'm sure that's because Android includes all of Windows. Yeah. I mean, you remember when they I, first started doing the... Hey, look, <sighs> HP's downloading. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's um, bloatware. Yeah, so you're making your resumes. And so what are you going to put on your resume? Well, a lot of deceitful lies. So as you know, I'm still in a coding boot camp and stuff. And so I'm putting down things that you would assume that I would know at the end of it. Not so much now. Um, so our whole course is pretty JavaScript and, you know, intensive and stuff. And we're using the Mern stack. So we got Mongo, we got Express, we got React, and we got Node. Um, it's so funny whenever I hear the word Mern stack. Mern. It's so funny because... There, there was another stack, which was the mean, the mean stack, which Angular, was the, the Angular way, and that was going to be the new thing. Like for three years, that was the new thing, and everybody uh, at work wanted everybody else to learn it and know what it. Mean, and I said no. Yeah. Yes. Because you were a view JS. I, I was a viewist. M M V R N. How do you pronounce that? Well, it, it just make the V look. Sound like a U, so it's Mern. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. Why? Yeah. V's and U's look the same. Yeah. So um, a little birdie sent me a link to a template that's available on the Google Docs for. I making sent a Matt resume. a template. <laughs> and um, it's lit it's one of the free templates. It looks really good. It does look really good, and they have a thing where you can list all your skills. So I I put uh, Mongo, I put Express, I put React, I put Node, I put JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Java. Uh, you're going to shoot me for this one, but I put down Rust because that is the hipster road that everyone's talking about, and I'm going to put it down. And I'm, I bought the Rust book, and if I own the book, I. You got to read the book, by got, the way. Oh, damn it. <laughs> um, yeah. I also put down uh, Linux, Docker, and Git. That's fine. Um, so, my, my only advice to you is if you do interviews before you finish your class, that you should know at least how to answer the vaguest conceptual questions about any of the things you just listed. So, for example, I understand if, ownership. If that that you win, that's you know Rust. Then that's good enough for me. Um, so nobody expects you to have professional experience yet, because obviously you're, you're in a boot camp. You couldn't have been working unless you would put that on your resume, and you didn't. So no, I just put down my skills. I know problem real solved. work history with that. So the only thing that I would require is that to not lie, you do know and memorize. That you know that even the most vague conceptual and high level details about this thing. So if somebody asks, "How does Docker work?" Uh, Docker works by virtualizing in little containers all of your things you're trying to run, all your so, services code, and whatever. what version they're running. Right. Okay, that's good enough for me. That's all. That's all you need. Um, and like, if somebody asks about Rust, I mean, you can talk about ownership a little bit. That's fine. Um, you can talk about cargo and how wonderful it is. And right. Like how if, you, can... if somebody asks about React, they might ask, so how do you make a React component? Easily. Just Google it. Uh, don't say that, but I agree. That is that is kind of the joke. Um, so there, there's a certain sense of authenticity when you put something on your resume. And I have until June to learn it. You do, but if you do interviews before then, you should be careful. Yes, yes, and I might remove the rusty thing. No, no, um, rust is fine. Like owner, being able to cite ownership, that's good enough for me. You just have to know about the other things, and you just you just have to know like two sentences worth of detail. I can, I can, I can make that up. Don't make it up. Just know. Different. But, okay, I, I told you what happened last week. The one of the, the other professors thought I was a TA. I look the part. I have this bushy beard, and it's getting bushier. Looking and the part just... is not the same as... Oh, yeah, but but I just got to fake it in the interview. No, you have to know. Ah, see, I think I think we have a difference of opinions. Yeah, on, uh, that's why this. I'm employed still. I'm employed too, even though I called in sick. I'm now on the deemed desirable list because I'm abusing sick leave because I'm using the sick leave I've earned. To, to, to go and learn new stuff, to get yeah. out of there. Anyway, uh, um... So LinkedIn, I've heard you've updated your LinkedIn. Is that true? Uh, that is true. And um, so, so on LinkedIn, what, um, like, what, what are you going to put on LinkedIn? So you have your current employment, you have your union work. I think I might have put my old bookstore because nobody oh. couldn't verify it. Mm -hmm. Cause, and uh, of course, you have your uni University of Minnesota boot camp on there. But I did not put any of my lawn mowing experiences or Good. my don't, carpet laying. Don't put either of those because those are not real. Uh, and so finally here, I've heard that you've ordered business cards. I did, and I did something clever with them. 
What, on the back? What well, did you do? I mean, everyone's got business cards and stuff, and lots of them have the option to have a back, and people are like, appointments, or here's a little calendar, or, or notes. here's that. Yeah, or notes. It's not cool. You got to put something on there. Something interactive. Yep. So I put a QR code to, linking to MatthewPetrel.com, which according to Google Domains, I should have ownership again on the 24th. <laughs> That's good. I transferred ownership. I had shared hosting that wouldn't allow me to do anything cool. Yeah. So, so I what, moved. what kind of hosting are you going to get? Um, I'm 100% going with Linode. Uh, DigitalOcean nice. looks lame. Okay. Um, Don't worry. I have, I, I have you, referral codes to both. You have referral codes to both. Um, I looked at both. Um. Who cares about little droplets and a little other things? It look, it looks, I don't know. Linode is older and cooler. I agree, almost. And the, the price points are the same. I know you're saying that Linode. Yeah, was they a, might have changed. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they have a five dollar a month option too now. Oh, that's nice. So, same same kind of spec. Dollar for dollar. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Um, so your business cards will have a QR code on them. What are you going to have on your website? That is right now. I hope to have little links to projects and stuff, but as you know, I don't really have anything that's outside of class, which is what you're harping on earlier. Yeah, I should do something creative and cool. It doesn't even have to be cool. It just has to be non-class work. Yes. So I'll cross that bridge when I get there. It's just going to have a picture of me. I'm in boot camp. Woohoo! And a link to my GitHub. I I hope that when you get to the page, Woo-hoo. I hope that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Like as you scroll down, it goes woohoo. Yeah, because as you know, in Chrome, if you interact with the page, it can play a sound. <laughs> you just, it can't be automatic. Yes, can't be automatic. Wow, that is got to be a key press, got to be a scroll. That is too funny. Um, yeah, okay, that's great. So that's um, that's all I know for now. Um, any any uh, upcoming events at your boot camp that you know about? Um, Always in the dark, though. Usually. Yeah, I, I was able to look a little bit further. We're just going to play a little more with APIs and stuff. And it's we were told that we're going to have a group project in a few weeks oh. and that he will be picking groups. So oh. I have no idea how big and who I'm going to be partnered with. And he says he's doing it to make sure they're balanced. So, so I'm not happy. Do you think that group project would be the same like period of time? So it's one week? No, 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 no. I think we're going to get a lot more. Okay. Yeah, the group projects are always scary, so brace yourself. Well, it's just, when we did that going over an assignment that we had the answers to, it still took an hour to talk to something we had the answers for, because not everyone's taking this class seriously. Yep. And um, a group is only as strong as the weakest link. That's true. Uh, Or as much work as the leader of the group is willing to put in. I... I'm going to fight for a leadership role. Well, of course you are, because you like to do work. Well, I like to learn. I'm trying to get as much... Everyone's paid the same, but not everyone's going to get the same out of this class. Yep. Um, and, and that's what we talked about in every, basically in every episode, that if if you don't want to do it, then you won't learn it. So um, I'm not going to tell the audience because that's cheating and they have to stay tuned, but I will show you what we're doing on March 7th. It starts with an F and ends in an E. And it's a Google product. You'll never guess what it is. (laughs) All right, that's all I got for you this week. Where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at MatthewPetchel.com. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and RyanMR. And of course, on my website, RyanRampersett.com. And of course, this is in bootcamp. This has been IB6 in Bootcamp 6. And of course, you can find our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. And of course, you can also find our comment section where I do encourage you to write us a comment or two, which is uh, reddit.com slash r slash TV. And please do comment there because I would love for somebody to agree to, with that it is A-OK to put values in an image tag. It is not OK. I would love for somebody to formally suggest and provide documentation on why that is a bad practice. You were ready to tell me to jump off a bridge yesterday or on Wednesday. You were <sighs> you were pretty pretty upset with me. Man, uh, bad code <laughs> makes Ryan upset. Nothing else. His house could be burning down. His car could be totaled because somebody else turns out he's okay with it. But bad code <laughs> crossing the line. Bad. <laughs> Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.